Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's year is off to a very productive start. Hopefully, we'll continue to see more relief on interest rates throughout this year. And I know we love all talking about rates getting better. So let's talk about something else I know everyone really loves, which is politics. And I'm just kidding, but only kind of. Uh, so every year, NAR sets a fundraising goal for local PACs, which is a political action committee. And those numbers are based on size and past year's performance. So in 2023, our VAR was less than $200 away from hitting that goal, which is fantastic. But we were over 11% away from our goal of 25% participation, meaning at least 25% of our members contribute at least $15. Now, I don't want or expect anyone to invest in our pack, which is the Realtors pack, just to make a spreadsheet look good. It can be kind of a challenge to succinctly articulate the value our pack brings to us, but I'm going to try. So every year, there are attempts at the state level to eliminate the mortgage interest deduction, which provides our clients and many of us with an additional tax write-off for the interest they pay on their mortgage. Time and again, we've partnered with state legislators to keep that deduction intact. Locally, there have been discussions about fire safety and home energy scores that would be required when a home is being sold, adding an additional hurdle to the sale process and potentially completely disrupting a sale depending on the structure of the proposal. So through collaboration with elected officials, Oregon Realtors, NAR, and some very strategic marketing, Arvar developed a program that will better inform and incentivize our clients rather than placing prohibitive mandates on them with regards to fire safety. And we've engaged in similar conversations regarding home energy scoring, which we'll continue to have. So these are just a couple of examples of how RPAC engages in advocacy on behalf of members and clients. And honestly, many of you may not have even been aware of any of that. And I think a lot of the time, that's kind of the point. RPAC advocates for policies that support home ownership and private property rights and against harmful policies. So when you don't notice a disruption to your business, it's because RPAC is succeeding in its goal. With that in mind, I'd love to see many first time investors join us this year in contributing to RPAC so we can continue to protect our businesses and clients. Another piece of RPAC is engaging with local elected officials. Now, historically, we've done this in a number of ways. We conduct candidate interviews. We make independent expenditures. We financially contribute to independent campaigns. A few times in the past, we've curated a voter's guide. And occasionally, we've even publicly endorsed a candidate. One tool we've never used is polling, which many PACs utilize in order to be armed with information and position themselves as a valuable resource. We recently conducted some preliminary polling in Josephine County, and we'll be doing the same in Jackson County. These preliminary polls will help us understand the current political landscape and, as I mentioned, will provide us with valuable information. And hopefully it'll put us in a position where elected officials, potential candidates, and the public are coming to us for insight. If they continue to provide benefit, we'll do additional polling in the future with a more narrow focus. Rest assured, these polls are funded entirely from our PAC contributions, not your dues. And we're not shifting our focus to general politics. Arva remains committed to what our goal has always been, which is providing value to our members by advocating for home ownership, private property rights, and protecting your businesses. So if you have any questions about RPAC in general or any of the specific topics discussed here, I'd love to connect with you. And as always, if there's anything else you have questions or concerns on, don't hesitate to get in touch. Thanks, guys.